that, for instance, we, within um, a lot of these factories, because they don't want to be responsible for, um, for, for working or operating within the law and being held accountable to protect labor, they are engaging third parties. So they'll get a third party to hire workers for them and then distance themselves from having to distance themselves from the responsibility of having to take care of their workers and to operate within the law. And so you, it's difficult to find who to hold accountable. And I think that it's important for government to recognize that reality. Because, um, because right now we will say all workers within a certain sugar factory are, are, are complaining about low wages, are complaining about not having access to maternity leave, are complain they, they have all these complaints. But when you go to the factory to hold them accountable, they will argue that they are not the ones employing these people and that there is another actor that should be held accountable. So I think it's important because um, when it comes to public sector, the public sector arrangement, it's clear who should be held accountable. But when it comes to the casual workers' experience, it's unclear who should be held accountable. And I think it's important to take that into consideration. Thank Most you. of these Chinese companies, mm -hmm. they are very terrible employers. Why am I saying this? Most of the Chinese companies, you are not supposed to become pregnant. It is so paining, and when I'm speaking like this, I am speaking with a lot of evidence that I have. In one of the companies, if a female employee gets pregnant, you have to remove it. And the worst part of it is that it is the same Chinese who sleep with them and ask them to abort and throw the fetus in the, in the trenches, which is very, very painful to us. And two, some of these Chinese companies, they don't recognize the union. They have refused completely. And they are mistreating workers in those, in those companies. And most of the workers there are female. They are underpaid and maltreated. I really want to send this statement to ministry. Thank you. This issue of harassment for sure needs, the, first of all, needs God's, God's mercy. Yes, because it's only God that can make somebody have emotional stamina for men to zip and for women to keep on their knickers. And again, we have to, in, in our health sector, like the Minister of Health, we have code of conduct. If it is not God's mercy, somebody is not going to go according to code of conduct, hence risking the, yourself. And in a, me, I am a midwife by profession. I have worked night duty. 25 years in the field. There is what we call idol. At workplace, if you become idol, things will happen. Because number one, let's say you are working with a doctor in one room. Somebody have said that when you are examining like a female patient, you are with a doctor, you are examining a female patient. After you have finished, you are a female nurse, you are with a doctor, you are remaining together. If you have no, you don't have emotional stamina, you are gone, you are finished. <laughs> Are you saying? So, you need to be busy all the time. If he says you are beautiful, you say that we have a cramped mother who is on this treatment. What can we do? And you divert somebody, the mind. the mind. So, this idol is very, very dangerous. Then, as I conclude one minute, there should be creation of automatic jobs. If I finish, like students, if I finish studying, I have where to go immediately. I should not look for a job. Because as I am looking for a job, 
I will meet this one who have no emotional emotional stamina and you will say please one minute and I am born. <laughs> I'm lucky for me from one step to the other I have been getting jobs automatically without one, without one minute <laughs> as you have said but it is being faced by other people lastly there is some people are using sexual harassment as a weapon if they see Judith that I have emotional stamina somebody is going to say no how can I manage Judith then that person will look for all means to weaken Judith. Are you seeing? And, and say that, please, let me do something so as I can weaken him or weaken him. Because Jed, apart from ratifying, you are the main implementer. We supposed to create the reporting mechanism for the trade unions to, to know and take the message down. We supposed to create the awareness to the public so that the rest of the leaders can take it and as you initiate the regulations. And when you talk about gaps in the regulations, the gaps, regulations initiated by the Ministry of Labor or gaps in the laws that are made in Parliament. The doctor goes in an examination room with a nurse and both of them are examining a, a woman psychologically what is going to happen. I'm talking about the nature of job. So the examination continues. <laughs> <laughs> you also, Professor, gave an example of a lady, younger lady going to the, to the younger lecture, dressed in such a manner that it is interesting the lecture. So if we are to address all this harassment, which is gender-based, both male and female, we need to look at all factors and come with a way forward. We should not be biased on one side. Because there must be, how did the harassment start? Maybe that frequent coming to that lecture addressed in such a way, create such, certain things in the minds of a man and starts getting pictures now. Yes, because harassment may not be something that starts once and ends there. It could be a process for one month and it ends up resulting through something bad. So I think all that when we are debating, we need to understand who is harassing who, and who started that section of harassing. Psychological torture, very bad. The way we talk, the way we treat, is another form of harassment. And even somebody, I've, I've, I've ever talked to, to some female workers, whereby she cannot concentrate on her job because every time she expects the boss to send a certain message, a word. And that alone makes somebody not concentrate. You are in fear. So to me, I think it's high time. Let's not cover ourselves under the culture norms. The culture norms can be stopped. You know what is happening in Sebei, we are reducing that. And some cultures are changing. <laughs>